In my life, I was about 30 before I started getting any attention. Virtually in the moment that I decided, oh well, I'll be a poor artist because I'm an artist, that was when things started going well. And by then I had come to terms with the fact that I was going to do it anyway. I was going to do it whether or not I made the finals. I was going to do it because it was what I seemed to be best at. And if the thing you're best at in life is tennis, you're kind of in this bind. You have to decide at some point to commit to trying to be the best, knowing that you're probably not going to be. And that might mean I get my name in lights, or it might mean I'm number one, or it might mean I go as far as I can because I love the sport. And then you've got to figure out what to do with the highs and the lows, and the blows, and the rejections, and the losses. That takes the same sort of grit. What an angle that was! Persistence. Oh, stunning! And self belief. No way! To achieve in the arts and in sport. He has fired up Melbourne. They're both fields in which thousands of people want to reach the top. The results of her life! Oh, no. And statistically, oh, they're not all going to. We've seen it all! But the moments you remember are when you're feeling like a god and the audience feels like the wind beneath your frickin' wings. Yeah, it is. Good morning. New Year. New Year, man. New Year. Fresh air. Thank you. We'll see you later. Yesterday I was in the lockers, so I chose mine. And, uh, and next to mine was uh, Djokovic. He, he has the same size, but he has three. And I have one. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> The stories and the faces we see, they are the Novak Djokovic's and the Arena Sabalenka's, and it can look like a perfect life. But the reality for 80% of tennis players is, uh, is very different. You need to make the main draw of the first major. This fund of 120K is an investment into your coaching staff, into your travel expenses. If you qualify, that can make or break your whole season. The quiet was um, different. I was number one of the seedings. I just want to play the, the, the first round. My team said, Take it because uh, you can do it. Thank you so much. Big things coming. Netflix. When I qualified for my first Grand Slam, I decided to go pro. In that moment, I thought I've arrived. The wait is over. The Grand Slam season starts now. All the all the car was for uh, for Jari. When I broke Jari in the fifth set, and then. Uh, I did like this. I love to play the big matches. I'm 18 years old. It's uh, my, my, my first match on Road Leva. This right. My first match in a uh, main draw Grand Slam. Dino Prishmek. He's tough, he's reliable, he's durable. I just want to, I said, enjoy every moment on the court. It's a big thing also for me, play against Novak. What's your game plan? Uh, my game plan. <laughs> Does he have enough weapons against the master of Melbourne, Novak Djokovic? 
for an 18-year-old, he played so maturely and so confidently on the court. What a firecracker! I felt at, at, at some point that I was playing myself in the mirror. He has to be the real deal. I play against the best in the world for, for all the time. There is a long way to go to beat the champ. I think I learned a lot from Novak. If he continues this way, he's going to have a, a very bright career ahead of him, no doubt. It's 29 consecutive wins for Novak at the Australian Open. Today, he escapes by the skin of his teeth. I'm really proud of myself. The crowd know they have witnessed something outstanding. I just want to want to continue to work and also play my best tennis. We won't see any more of him in Australia, though. But we will have Novak as he gets through to the second round. Hey, how are you? Hey. See, there's a camera following me for once. I'm <laughs> oh, good. How you doing? You good? You in shape? Yeah, I'm, I'm fit. Yeah. You're this this year, give me fit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I hope so. Yeah, I'm fit. <laughs> I do think there is a certain kind of generational change right now on the women's side. When you have a major breakthrough like Coco had at the US Open, it propels you into a next realm. Iga Shiontek, since the US Open, she has looked impeccable. I really think she wants to win this one. But I think Arena Sabalenka, for me right now, looks like the biggest favorite. Good, how are you? <laughs> I think it's her tournament to lose. Obviously, it is tennis, it is chaos. So we don't know what will happen. The two-time former champion, Naomi Osaka, back in action. There's a voice in my head that's like, who are you to like think that you can come back and immediately start winning matches? It's Caroline Garcia's evening. She prevails over the returning former champion. I'm delusional enough to think like I could have won the tournament. She can certainly hold her head up high because she is coming. I just have to keep living day by day and training hard and playing a lot more matches and hopefully my dreams will come true. I think some things go easily and some things don't. And you can't always control that mechanism. We wave goodbye to Angebert. What you can control is how hard you work. It's another early exit for Maria Sakkari. And self-belief. Not the start he was looking for. You might have terrible periods, a terrible year. And the world number five is set packing. You might have the press telling you you're not as good as everyone said you were. You need to find your resources. Back to the drawing board for him. The resource is, this is what I do. I've got no other option but to persevere. Plenty to ponder. Being here in the second week was obviously a major goal. This is a match that I believe he's going to learn from. I feel like I blinked and it was over. Bitterly disappointing. You know, I didn't get to win tonight, but it's just life. Done. There is really nothing more satisfying than success after a lot of um, highs and lows. It's kind of sweeter than the ones that come easily. Yeah. The only problem is it's like a, it's a memoir. It's not a memoir. It's a um, in your own words. Ready? Yeah. So I need this. Watch me do my thing. Watch me do my thing. Watch me. Record attendance again this year. We are going to cross the threshold of a million visitors. Oz Open's huge. It's one of the biggest four tournaments that we have on the planet. The crowd plays a huge part in, in, in the energy levels in this event. They get behind who they want to see win, and, and most of the times it is the Australian players. Alex Dimadur flying the flag for the Australian males. If a seed plays a qualifier, dangerous. They just want to go out there, swing and, and, and play their best. First experience, big crowd, big stadium. Today it was tough. Uh, Alex, it was uh, unbelievable. Team Manure won't be taking his foot off the gas. Today was a matchup where I could definitely be the one dictating play. Keeps on throwing their jabs. The killer punch is not too far away. I played six matches, so a uh, long tournament. First time on third round. Oh, what a way to finish! I'm happy to be here to play this fantastic tournament. This one of my favorite. A brave effort from Flavio Caboli. 
I love you, Australia. Being in the second week feels like, uh, you know, the tournament really starts. Alex Dimonor is united, the nation of Australia. Rublev knows the crowd will be against him. When you see a Rublev playing, I, I would say, don't heckle them, don't poke the bear, because that's when they actually start playing some really good tennis. He looks calm, he looks composed, but how is he feeling inside? You don't want to be inside at these moments in my head. There isn't wins and losses as a performer. It's not that binary. You have good nights and bad nights, and you have nights when you walk on thinking, I can't do this tonight. I thought he was hurting physically. Feeling angry and pissed. Wanted to destroy everything. To feeling sad about myself. You find a way to change your energy, change the game. In the third and in the fourth, he just let go. He started uh, swinging. The balls went in. Remarkable Rublev. Freewheeling, freestyling, and Alex Dimonor could not contain him. Nothing about pressure, nothing about expectation. It just slipped away. It's about getting through the period of your life where you think it matters whether you're feeling good that morning. Maturity as a performer and perhaps as an elite sports person is about realising that you do it anyway. These guys that feed off being that villain, they want to mess up the fairy tale story. We have the world number one, Iga Schwantek, just 22 years of age, a four-time Grand Slam champion. She'll be taking on Linda Noskova. Last year I felt overwhelmed with beginning the year as world number one. This year I was more focused on my game a little bit more. And I know, you know, I'm going to have plenty of chances during the season to show my game. Oh, just a little long. And Iga Schwantek, the world number one here, has nabbed the first set six games to three. I felt like I had everything under control until she broke me in a second set. And what a way to bring up three break points. Some things just didn't work as they did before. Linda Noska was serving to level this match at one set all. I think she just went all in, you know, without any pressure and she has nothing to lose, you know. In the final game, you're down love 30. She plays those two great points. Is the hand shaking? Oh. <laughs> I was a little shaky, of course. Then I just refocused on what I should do. So I did it. Can you believe it? The world number one is out. Obviously the best memory from my tennis career so far. I have kind of no regrets, but for sure I wish I could have played a little bit better in this tournament. Tennis is so special compared to every other sport. You're out there alone, there's nowhere to hide, there's no teammates. You have to figure it out on your own. You start to have running conversations with yourself, and there's other personalities and it gets pretty hectic in there. Oh, they're gonna dance, they're gonna do it. Shake it, shake it! It's gonna go viral. Arena Sabalenka coming to a Grand Slam tournament that you've won before, trying to defend your title. Okay, you this is the most amount of pressure that a player can be under. We are into the quarterfinals. I'm just fighting for every point without thinking about my dreams. Oh, no way! The defending champion simply a class apart this evening. What was so good to see about Coco's trajectory she was not bothered by all the noise around her. Coco got too good and into the semis. It is a monumental task for anyone taking on the world number one.
the finest player in the world puts himself through to an 11th semi-final in Melbourne. Yannick Sinner, major champion on the horizon. Whether that's here at the Australian Open, I don't know. Sinner has beaten down Rublev's door. Daniel Medvedev, he just has that extra bit of survival in him. Daniel Medvedev is through to his third semi-final. Zarev puts out Alcaraz. What a fortnight for Diana Yastremska. Chin Wen is a big challenger. Well, the Chinese superstar is into the semi-finals here. This is just the beginning. <laughs> Diana Yastremska, when she came on tour and she was 17, 18, she was going to be the next one to win a Grand Slam title. With the following players, please go to the match for Eric, Diana Yastremska, Jane Kingway. I feel like I can, one day I can win a Grand Slam. We'll go. We'll go. We can go, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's a very good evening for what is a monumental occasion here, women's semi-finals. When you have a nice mixture of young, fresh faces that tell a new story, really makes a fun setup for semi-finals. Arena Sabalenka would be the favourite to win the tournament, but she's got an incredibly tough match in Coco Goff, and some would say that, that that's the final. Watching Serena and watching, you know, Sharapova, they didn't let one match define their careers. Sabalenka, the forehand volley, golf out of position, plays a low ball. This just sits up and gets over from Sabalenka. She's off the net, but she put it over nicely, golf. No matter what the score was, I was just trying to do my best and fighting for it. Serena Sabalenka, she has wrapped up the first set. Are there cracks appearing in Yastremska's game? She's a great player. She has uh, powerful shots and really good serve. Jin Wen Zhang is one set away from a maiden major final. I had to give a little bit more than she did. There was not much to give. <laughs> it's taken her to match point. Rod Laver Arena goes quiet. Sabalenka serves. Gets the first serve in. Backhand is into the net from Goff. Sabalenka just turns round, looks at her camp, shakes her racket, and there's a lovely warm embrace at the net. Match point. Zheng Chenwen is an Australian Open finalist. To arrive at my real first grassland final, that's my dream since I was a kid. I know there's still another fight to go, so I'm trying to control my emotion right now. <laughs> It will be the Chinese that will get a shot at glory here on Saturday night. I'm super happy to be in, the, in, the, in another final of the Grand Slam. It's one more to go and I'll do my best. This has been a very special city, uh, best by far Grand Slam of, of my career and never lost in semis or finals of Australian Open. And welcome to men's singles semi-finals day. Yannick Sinner taking on Novak Djokovic. The first two sets, um, I saw that he was not hitting the ball uh, as he used to. I was shocked with my level. Sinner with the best possible start. Not much, I was... Uh, doing right in the first two sets. Sinner takes a two sets to love lead against Djokovic. I managed to raise the level a little bit in the third. Now he's starting to find his range. I lost the, the third set with, my, with match points. Novak is back in business in a big way. Game on! I just try to stay as positive as possible. We know what his potential is, but to do it on this stage is a different story. Happy that I and I could, could finish the match. It's sensational from Yannick. He is through to his first major final. Hope that I'll get a chance to play at least another time and go through the emotions once more. I'm looking forward for Sunday and let's see what's coming. I thought it was... I don't know, but I got 
Welcome to the second of the evening semi-final from Melbourne Park. I had my moments with him. You know, we're not friends, but we seem to, to respect each other more than before. In the first two sets, I was, I was really on top of his serve a lot. Zverev takes the two sets to lovely. I started to lose energy. Something just a little different for the racket of Medvedev. And against him, it's impossible to play when you're not 100%. I wasn't the same player as I was the first two sets. I was kind of just hanging on. What a sport, what a night, and what a future we have over the weekend. I'm uh, proud and uh, looking forward to the final to, to give my 100% again. It's a very, very warm welcome to you wherever you are around the world. It is women's singles finals night. Maturity as a performer and perhaps as an elite sports person ends up being as boring as professionalism. Have I done the work? Am I fit? Have I trained? And once you've done that work and you've given yourself the best shot, then the rest is just a belief that this is what I've done, this is my job, I'm gonna do my best, and the rest is out of your control. Oh, I'm full of butterflies. I couldn't imagine what the players are feeling right now. Yeah. I know that Chin Wen is a big challenger and she will do anything to rattle Arena in the final, but she is still the player to beat. She's just looked better than everybody else. It's, it's all about the process and about the discipline. Make sure that you're always there, you always show up and you always uh, work hard. The scene is just about set inside Rod Laver Arena to what promises to be a really intriguing contest. It's been in my mind that I didn't want to be that player who win it and then disappear. She's a really aggressive player if you let the chance go. And it's a fast start here for Sabalenka. And that is just almost unplayable for, from Sabalenka. Today's match, uh, I didn't perform as my best. I really want to show better than that. I actually thought after last year that it's going to help me to be more free and like don't care about things. Sabalenka just too much firepower and playing from a superior positioning in the court. But not really, you know, like you still feel the same, you still want it badly and you still fight for it and show your best level. Oh, she's on a roll now, Arena Sabalenka. It takes me so much time to kind of like become who I am right now on court. Championship point. To have this control myself and to understand myself better, it's been a long journey. For a second successive year, Sabalenka is supreme in Melbourne. She defends her title and she is the 2024 Australian Open champion. It's definitely given me more confidence and believe in myself of everything I was able to achieve so far. I'm super happy that I was able to get this win today. Yay! Yes. 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 Ouch! We're coming right now. Please come grab Sabi. Uh, thank you. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you. It's a part of you. It's amazing. Oh, that's why I need it. <laughs> what I love most about Daniil Medvedev is how he competes in tennis matches. It's a whole thing. It's a chess game. He's playing mind games. The only question will be, he has played a lot of tennis. Will he be able to recover for the final? Will he be able to find that extra bit of energy to compete? Hello and welcome to everyone for today's men's final of the Australian Open. Yannick is the player of the last two or three months. He always used to hit the ball hard. Now he has the serve to back it up with. And he's finally gotten a bit stronger. Two potential champions, both with the same dream. I just tried my best. I was a little bit in trouble today. Two sets to love down. And that's Medvedev at his absolute best. I wanted to win, I was close. Was I really close or not? Tough to say, but was not far. My energy level dropped because I didn't have a perfect sleep. I was playing long before, so let's call it my fault. 
I didn't really do bad mistakes. I think what happened is he started to play better. This most magical 15 days here in Melbourne continues to deliver. I just tried to stick, trying to save, trying to stick into the game plan, which I had to adjust a little bit. When you win one very important game, the match can change occasionally, and and, and that was the case today. And for a moment, it feels as though we're in Milan and not Melbourne. The momentum changed and I really tried in my mind to change it back again because that's what tennis is about. The more the match goes on, maybe physically I'm a little bit better today. And a simply sensational way for Yannick Sinner to win the Australian Open. The support I get is incredible and, and the crowd they give you, that's the reason why you, why you play. It's, it's an amazing feeling. He is the last man standing. He will never, ever forget this night.